closer now is uh, bringing us right now former assistant foreign policy to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, Carolyn Glick. She's also a former member of Israel's negotiating team with the Palestine Liberation Organization. Always wonderful to see you, Caroline. Thank you for joining us on Newsline today. Good to be with you, Bianca. What do you make of this publicly? We stand with Israel. Behind the scenes, as you just heard our James Rosen, unprompted from reporters, a very detailed statement there about what can and cannot happen. Um, is this uh, something that Israel will heed, or do you believe that they will go on to eradicate Hamas with or without the White House's um, directive here? Um, well, I think it's a very big source of concern because Israel is still waiting for a lot of the resupply of our uh, munitions that we need in order to prosecute the war from the United States. Um, some of it is held up in Congress. Some of it is being stalled in the shipment. So um, there's concern about that. Um, but there's also concern because the Biden administration, uh, President Biden on October 25th, uh, acknowledged that the uh, Palestinian uh, health ministry in Gaza is controlled by Hamas and that their data on casualties is not credible. But then the next day, Fox News reported, I think, or the Washington Post, that um, actually the next day he he apologized to Muslim American leaders for saying that. And since then, the Biden administration has been treating as fact the propaganda being put out by Hamas about casualty numbers, which is a problem because uh, Hamas counts all of its terrorists as civilians. So the United States is basing their demands on Israel on fake information from Hamas. And yes. the problem is, of course, of Hamas, there's an additional problem, which is that Hamas's terrorists are embedded in a civilian population in order to ensure civilian casualties. So when the United States says you can't have civilian casualties and you have one lying about what the casualties How do you are decipher and the two, two, a deliberate doctrine, it's a problem. We just got the uh, breaking news moments ago that three soldiers that were uh, abducted on October the 7th were declared uh, dead. Um, so tragic news. Again, more losses by the IDF. There's reports now that Hamas may have violated the ceasefire as well. We believe the deal will still go through today, though, Caroline. I mean, you are a former member of Israel's negotiating team uh, with uh, the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Tell us about how you see this moving forward and, and what, what success would mean to you. Obviously, we are seeing some reunited but there's still many more, I believe, um, 180 perhaps, still uh, being held right. by Hamas. Uh, maybe a little bit fewer because, uh, as, as you noted, the three soldiers were declared dead and mm -hmm. another civilian was uh, found to have been dead. So we don't know how many more among the counted as kidnapped are actually are actually murdered. So we'll have to wait and see with that. But I think, you know, the outcome has to be the dual outcome of releasing the hostages and eradicating Hamas. And we have to recognize that the longer that we wait to restore our, our war operation, uh, the more the momentum is on Hamas's side. And indeed, they attacked with remote bombs uh, three bombs uh, against our forces on the ground in, in Gaza that were in agreed ceasefire position. So this was an act of aggression by Hamas. They broke the ceasefire yet again in this act of wanton aggression and attempted murder of IDF soldiers on the ground during the ceasefire in Gaza. This is the nightmare scenario. I, I get the sense that the, that the government wants to get the hostages out that are supposed to be with uh, uh, that are supposed to be released today. They're being released now. I understand they've been moved to the Red Cross and mm -hmm. uh, are supposed to be transported to Egypt. Um, so I think that after that, they're going to have to have a, a serious reconsideration of what's going on. But they're under tremendous pressure from the Biden administration that's acting really at under the leadership of Qatar, which is Hamas's state pa uh, sponsor, to get Israel to keep up this ceasefire. Uh, in a way that's really damaging to our war effort. How frustrating is it for you as, as to hear some of how the media reports this as well um, and the questions that are being asked about how Israel and the demands for Israel to be upholding international law? I mean, we have Arab states, the European Union agreeing that a two-state solution was the answer. Uh, and, you know, so much talk about that still when there is a, a conflict and the IDF has a mission to carry out. I mean, that leads to a lot of some of the disinformation, Caroline, as you well know. 
I think that there's a lot of anti-Semitism behind a lot of the reporting. I mean, it's obvious that we can't have a two-state solution because the Palestinians reject Israel's right to exist and are unified in their desire to annihilate Israel. We just had a senior Palestinian Authority uh, official, Jibril Rajub, today saying that uh, the Hamas was justified and it was a act of resistance to slaughter our babies and that all the Palestinian factions, including the Palestinian Authority, are united in their joint effort to eradicate the Jewish state. So, I mean, this is the Palestinian Authority. There, there can't be a peaceful coexistence with a state made up of people who are completely unified around the one idea of committing genocide and annihilating Israel. So it's very disturbing. Well, we appreciate you um, joining us today. Obviously, there's a lot that hangs in the balance moment by moment, a, a fluid Michael, situation, but uh, so many family members hoping for um, their loved ones today as, as we see sort of the Biden administration putting out some really um, disturbing comments for you militarily. Caroline Glick, thank you so much. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me on, Bianca. Thank you. Always. Thank you.